Hello, my name is Billy Hicks and welcome to my observatory, my home beneath the stars. Some of you may know me as the planetarium guy. I've been very fortunate that I've done a lot of work with the Tennessee STEM Innovation Network over the years. Uh, this past year I visited 131 schools conducting planetarium and science programs. I used to teach higher ed. Um, I worked for NASA for about a decade. Now I'm retired and I'm just trying to pay back for the great life that education gave me. I'm gonna be doing three videos to introduce some hints and some tips regarding viewing the solar eclipse that's coming up on August the 21st. The first video is going to be dealing with direct viewing with solar glasses and also what you can expect during the time of totality and to get your students ready to really relish in that moment. The second video is going to also be dealing with direct viewing, maybe using some of optical equipment that's laying around the house gathering dust. I'll show you an example shortly. And the third video is going to be dealing with indirect viewing. And teachers, this is going to be particularly of interest to you uh, for those of you who teach the lowest grades. With indirect viewing, that means you don't look at the sun to be able to view the eclipse. So let's get started. You know that it's a rare event. The solar eclipse in Nashville, the last time we had a total solar eclipse in Nashville, Tennessee, Nashville, Tennessee didn't even exist. It was in the 1400s. And some of you may be thinking, well, if I miss this one, I'll catch the next one. If you're waiting in Nashville to catch the next one, you're going to have to wait more than five hundred years. Some of you are going to live in an area where you only get a partial eclipse. Some of you are going to be in totality. Tips that I give you in these next videos will work no matter where your location is. I will post a link to a map at the end of this video and you'll be able to find out exactly if you're in totality or not. And if you are in totality, how long will totality last? That will be very important as a teacher to know. How are we going to view the solar eclipse? Well, in this first video, I'm just going to show you one example. Very inexpensive, but they do cost. Very safe. Solar glasses. One size fits all. Teachers, certainly before the solar eclipse, you need to be helping little people figure out where to put their bins to be able to make it fit their face and not fall off. If your students seem to be having trouble keeping it on their face without it falling off, you must teach them to hold it with both hands. The last thing we want is for you to be staring at the sun and all of a sudden your glasses fall off. No matter where you buy your glasses, no matter whether you've bought them already or you're about to buy them, make sure your glasses are certified. On the earpiece, if you've already purchased some, you should either find the letters ISO or CE. That means that they have met a certain standard. It also means that the film will block 99.999% of the visible light. All of the UV, all of the infrared will be blocked. If you have purchased glasses and they are not certified, you cannot use them. Well, before we wrap this video up, let's talk about what to expect. And you can share this with your students during the moments of totality. The actual event will take about an hour and a half from the moment the shadow of the moon touches the limb of the sun until we have totality. I'm going to start about one hour and 28 minutes into the event. You are only seeing a sliver of the sun. You must keep these students marshaled under your control with their solar glasses on. And all of a sudden, the leading edge of this thin crescent will break up and it will become little balls of light around the leading edge. They are called Bailey's beads. All of a sudden, after about 20 seconds, all those little 
beads of light, which are really just the valleys on the moon where light is shining through. All of a sudden, they will coalesce into one bright dot. That is called the diamond ring effect. You'll see a dark sphere with one bright dot. Still keep your solar glasses on. You've got about 15, 20 seconds to go. And all of a sudden, your diamond ring, the diamond, will wink out. Total darkness. At this point, you can have your students take their glasses off. Actually, it's the only way to see the coolest thing that's about to happen. You can look up at the sun without any eye protection and see a shimmering curtain. That's the corona of the sun that you cannot see any other time. After 20 or 30 seconds, have your students move away from the corona and start just looking straight up. If you're lucky, you can see the stars in the middle of the day. You'll be looking at winter constellations and there'll be two really bright planets that you may be able to pick out. Uh, one, Venus, and one right above your head just about is Jupiter. So now you've got a way to see the solar eclipse and better yet, you have a way of prepping your students beforehand of what to expect. We're gonna go from a crescent to Bailey's beads to a diamond ring, then totality. Take the solar glasses off, but set a timer on your phone. Know how long totality is going to last and it will happen in reverse order. All of a sudden you'll see a diamond ring, Bailey's beads, a thin crescent. That'll be the event of a lifetime. Hope you've learned something that you can use in your classroom and wishing you the clearest of skies.